All right, this is Travis Wayne Goodsell, and it's time for the LDS April 2019 172nd General Conference pre-show review. <laughs> I do not accept that it's the 189th, because that would mean that Joseph Smith legitimately passed on succession to Brigham Young. He did not. The church cannot claim it. They cannot claim it. Sorry. And... Uh, if you're not watching my videos, then you don't have any clue as to why. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, we'll give you a pre-game show or show uh, a pre-show review, <laughs> so that uh, you may get a hint at uh, the reasons why. All right, so they're obviously going to be talking temple, 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 temple. Why? Well, because it's God's true church, and he's established the gospel on the earth in the latter days, and his keys have been passed to the authority of the prophets through Brigham Young, and blah, blah, blah. No. No. Because Nelson has claimed that all of the changes since he's taken office are revelation. <laughs> They're not revelation. There is not a single revelation in any of it. Just because you make a business decision in order to generate more revenue does not make it a revelation. So, yes, temple, 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 temples. Why? Well, first, we've got Rome. And then there's, uh, like, the Idaho Temple, Boise, or Pocatello, or wherever it was. And then you have uh, 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 the new temple changes, of course. Uh, women are now de uh, devalued. They're no longer goddesses. They took the veil away from them. And uh, uh, so, let's see. All right, so, and then, uh, so we're going to expect more temple announcements in places that don't deserve them because there's not enough members and thus not enough tithing to pay for it uh, but hey the church is laundering money through LLC companies now they've got plenty of money to pay for lots more temples to fool members into thinking that the church is growing and uh, that's part of what the problem is why they're pushing temples uh, remember Russia <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we we're supposed to have one there, weren't we? <laughs> yeah, that's the whole point. I need to do that video uh, to show you the conspiracy behind the temple in Russia. Uh, but uh, uh, expect that it may be announced finally. The church had Mitt Romney placed in. This is all part of the conspiracy video I need to talk about. Uh, and he uh, was a part of the, the vote to lift the sanctions against the Russian oligarch who's busted, but they decided to uh, lift the sanctions on his businesses. <laughs> so it's unclear as to whether the church was using his businesses to make deals in Russia uh, for the land and all, the, all that stuff. Uh, but, uh, yeah, don't be surprised if we get to find out where the temple will be built in Russia. Um, and I need to do that conspiracy video for you. Uh, so, what's with all these temple stuff? All the temple changes, new temples, Rome temple, or... We're marking our territory on other people's property. What's up with that? And so, uh, yeah, uh, we have uh, a situation where membership isn't enough to justify a temple. Hold on a second. And uh, when you don't have enough membership, you're not generating the tithing, and thus you can't afford to 
put a temple where you don't have the membership in the location to justify a temple. Uh, and that's why Utah gets so many temples because they get so many per capita and thus they justify a temple. Uh, but elsewhere in the world, India, are you kidding me? Russia, are you kidding me? And, and so, yeah, they're, no, they're not doing it anymore according to membership numbers uh, and thus uh, tithing generated revenue. And so, uh, yeah, they're doing it through other means, and that's part of the Russian conspiracy video that explains it. Uh, the, uh, the whole thing that they'll talk about in conference, though, is the importance of going to the temple. Go to the temple, get the blessings of the Lord, and blah, blah, blah. And feel the spirit, and do the work for your kindred dead, and blah, blah, blah. But they won't tell you, or... They'll tell you separate and distinct, some other apostle will get that talk, about the necessity to pay your tithing. And uh, we haven't really heard much about tithing per se, as far as I can remember. But yes, they want you to pay tithing. And they won't make the connection with temples because they're connected. Remember your bishop's interview for a temple recommend renewal and stake president? You have to be a full tithe payer. And your tithing settlement at the end of the year, you have to be a full tithe payer. You can't be a partial tithe payer. You definitely can't be a non-tithe payer. You have to be a full tithe payer to get your temple recommend, to keep your temple recommend in order to go through the temple. And uh, thus, why they're pushing temples. They want money. Money, 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 money. Temple, 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 temple. Money, 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 money. They equal each other. And, uh, and so if they get more temple attendance, they get more money. <laughs> and they've tried to uh, get more people to go to sacrament. <laughs> hoping that by getting people to go to the sacrament that that will inspire them to want to go to the temple. <sighs> so, but uh, sacrament meeting attendance is for the budget of the wards. <sighs> Alright, and you notice that they they cut back on uh, the sacrament. It's uh, 10 to 15 minutes less now, it's 10 minutes less. Sometimes it ends up going over time. But. All right. So uh, the other thing that we will expect to hear about is the new changes announced earlier this morning about allowing adopted children of LGBT parents. Uh, if you remember, <laughs> the church came out and said children adopted by LGBTs are not allowed to be baptized or receive any blessings in the church. No, because who's the father? <laughs> are you my daddy? <laughs> We're both your daddies and we love you very much. And so, yeah, it was uh, a stress and strain on the leaders of the church as to what to do about that. And, uh, and so they said, okay, they can't get baptized, no blessings nothing until they turn 18 and leave the house. I'm willing to bet they did require them to leave the house because that's the way it was, uh, in, uh, well, that way it is still. Uh, if you're uh, a couple and you don't have to be LGBT, you can be a straight couple and just living together, not married. The, the missionaries will require you to f get married right away or move away from each other <laughs> in order to be baptized. <laughs> so, isn't that great? Oh, you want to join the church, huh? Well, uh, I see you're living together in sin. <laughs> Why don't you just get a pay your fees and, and be legally married and therefore you're no longer living in sin? 
it's magic how that works. You get a license and no longer sin. Amazing. <laughs> Regardless of the church's uh, 132, section 132 policy of if you're not sealed in the temple, any marriage doesn't matter. It's as if you're not married. You know, verse 19 versus the other column of this page where it talks about the sealing. So look it up for yourself if you're going, what are you talking about, Travis? <laughs> and then I can go on to a whole discussion about how that wasn't even Joseph Smith who gave that revelation. It was Brigham Young. No, it says it in the heading. No, no, no. But I've already done those videos. And so, uh, yeah, they'll be talking about how they love people and they love the LGP, LG, LGBT uh, people. Oh, they're so quaint and they're so funny and entertaining, just like blacks and other ethnic groups. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, the church is still racist. The church is still homophobic. The church is still sexist. The church is still xenophobic. The church is still bigoted, etc., etc., etc. So don't let this fool you. Why would they be wanting to allow kids in LGBT uh, parents with LGBT parents to uh, be allowed to be baptized? Well, what does it mean when you're baptized? You have to start paying a full tithing. And so, again, it goes back to money. The church clearly is hurting for money, uh, as well as membership numbers. Because, again, membership, baptism. And, and so, uh, yeah, the church is hurting in stats. Uh, last, last year, uh, the stats uh, were announced that they were not going to be mentioned anymore in conferences. And so you have to look it up for yourself, and they're not going to bring that up. They're not going to remind us. I'm willing to bet. Uh, and uh, as a result, uh, you'll be required to find out what the actual church membership is. And the church will only tell you the total number, and they won't go over the individual stats of each uh, country in the world with the number of stakes and the members per stake, the numbers per ward, the numbers per branch. And uh, they'll make that a mystery. <laughs> and so you'll have to look it up for yourself. Uh, if you really don't know how to look up on Google where to find it, <laughs> you can go to my other sites that talk about stats and uh, I've got it posted somewhere. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, yeah, the church was hurting last year. And so this is the one year. This is the one year mark of Nelson's reign of terror and authority. And so, uh, uh, yeah, we're going to, uh, again, keep track of the stats. See what happened from his first year in office. And, uh, and so, yeah, okay, that covers that. Uh, then we also have uh, the CES changes. Holland made that announcement that in 2020, uh, CES will go towards uh, uh, changing with Sunday school at the start of the year. And that sort of messes up the whole school year because at the beginning of your semester in the fall, you'll be teaching or you'll be doing the last half <laughs> of that year's scriptures, and then you go into the next semester in the winter, and you'll be starting a whole new uh, curriculum and seat in seminary. So that's going to be confusing. And then uh, the uh, new youth program. Remember, no more Boy Scouts. At first, it was because they were allowing gays, and they said, okay, well, we're going to eventually do away with the varsity, and then we'll do away with the younger, um, and then uh, girls want it in. 
And then immediately the church says, nope, we're out. <laughs> and so, yeah, no more scouting program. And uh, so in 2020, uh, a new youth program will be finished. They should be finishing up soon here because they've got to get it into the print press uh, for production on the print, on the printers or on the, the, the whatever they call them. And so uh, that's going to take some time, especially to make all the copies for all the wards and stakes and whatever throughout the church, throughout the world. And then they've got to mail them out. So that takes time. So they've got to hurry. There's a deadline this year. If they don't make that deadline, then it's going to be delayed next year. Uh, and Oh, yeah. Also in the temple. I told you about it. The devaluing of women. Uh, taking away your veils. Uh, yes, other cultures misinterpret the veil as understood anciently. But remember, the church does not consider themselves a branch off of other current modern churches, <laughs> or even classical churches such as Christianity <laughs> or Islam. <laughs> we, uh, they tell us that the church is a uh, an ancient restoration. Well, if it's an ancient restoration, then they need to stick to the ancient interpretations of the symbols and signs and all that. Thus, the veil is supposed to be the ancient interpretation, not the suppressed religious interpretation, where you cover up women uh, because they're evil and sinful and, and, uh, and uh, temptresses for men, and so we need to cover them up. That's the misinterpretation. The actual interpretation, and Mormons should have all caught this. It's not complicated. Who's behind the veil of the temple? End of story. All right, so uh, then, let's see. Uh, we're not going to hear anything. Maybe an illusion similar to uh, what Elder Oaks did, or President Oaks did, in October conference. Remember, the Kavanaugh hearings had just finished, and they, uh, four Mormons on that committee voted Kavanaugh into the Supreme Court, and now Kavanaugh's running amok and attacking women. <laughs> and other states are saying, oh, yes, we got Kavanaugh, we can do it now, we can overturn Roe versus Wade. And so, yeah, the... Uh, Expect a, uh, a uh, an allusion to that, if anything. But uh, in regards to Trump and his ty tyranny of abuses and authoritarianism and despotism upon America, not just the immigrants, but America, nothing will be said. They didn't speak out when Nazi Germany was terrorizing the world. They're not going to speak out now. So don't look for that, because <laughs> it won't be there, unless in some other form or fashion. And uh, we'll have to just wait to see how they sneak it in, into an illusion. Uh, so, all right. Uh, uh, the, according to the news report, or the world report, I guess the church is doing now, uh, they're going to be bragging about their aid throughout the world, helping those from the hurricanes and, and the poor people throughout the world. Yeah, but what are they doing in Utah? Nothing. <laughs> the church is giving out at least 0.1%, or at most 1.1%, because uh, they had to create and LDS Charities, which is separate from the church, it's an actual uh, charitable organization. The church is not a charity. as It is a non-profit organization that has profit businesses and educational businesses, the BYUs. And so uh, 
but uh, expect them to be bragging about how they've been caring for people around the world during all these tragedies caused by Trump. <laughs> it's, so, uh, yeah, but remember, token is not good enough. You have to, you know, 90% if you're a charity, and the charity organization is actually doing that. Uh, but uh, the church, they're not even following the rules for nonprofit organization giving. It's supposed to be 65%. And uh, they're not even following that. They're using justifications for other building and publications and stuff as their uh, justifiable cause. Uh, despite the, the bishop storehouses, which is supposed to be what they're referring to. Okay, we're a minute, everybody. Huh. It's going faster. Good. And uh, so expect them to be bragging about how they're so generous at 0.1%. <laughs> and uh, you tell. Yeah, I said new temples will be announced, so, okay, we're done with that set of notes. I had to do notes, because I wouldn't remember all of this stuff, just winging it like I do on all my videos. Okay, so, it's also one year from the new ministering program. Remember last year, he did away with home teaching. And, and he did away with family home evening. I forgot about that. Let me add that to the list here so I don't forget, and we'll get to it. One year from no family home evening. Okay. So, yeah, the ministering program did away with home teaching, did away with visiting teaching, even. And uh, so nobody's really getting visited anymore. Only those who are in desperate need and who asked for it as otherwise those of me <laughs> we've not been visited once <laughs> and so because they they no longer are required to record it and if you're not keeping track you're not caring <laughs> that was the whole purpose of of reporting uh, whether your home teaching got done or not uh, was to show uh, that uh, your, there was efforts made uh, to contact people. Uh, and yes, it was very poor <laughs> before, and uh, it's now worse because people say, oh, yeah, I don't need to record it, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I think I saw them at church. Yeah, they're fine. <laughs> so, yeah, that's been a change. So, don't be surprised if you hear uh, fake stats or, or uh, status on uh, the, uh, the, the progress and success of the ministering program. Just because you pick out a token person to tell you how good it is does not mean it's better than the old system. Again, tokens. Don't go fall for tokens. Don't fall for it. You know? When, yeah. <sighs> okay, so one year from the new Priesthood Release Society class lessons. Uh, last year we were supposed to do uh, uh, President Monson. Um, was it 2017 that we were supposed to? No, it was 2018. Uh, and uh, that was the last prophet left to do, but then he died. Uh, there at the beginning of January and so it would have been perfect he just died and then continue on with him as the the president of the church lessons for that year no they stopped it and uh, uh, where were you when I wanted you this morning okay. sorry I'm dealing with other stuff here as you can tell I'm multitasking <laughs> And, and so, uh, yeah, no ministers. It's a failed pro project. 
And so if they're going to claim that that was revelation, by their fruits ye shall know it. So not just for profits, it's for any project and idea you come up with. If you implement it and it fails and you followed everything exactly right as it was outlined and it fails, then you know that your idea was bad. It's that simple. And so, uh, yeah, you've got to go to the drawing board and figure out a new approach. But will the church do that? They have in the past because of the extreme failures of many of the projects they've done. But they always come back and blame the members for not implementing it the way they designed it. <laughs> they got to factor in the human factor. If you don't factor in the human factor, you're going to fail every time. And so, uh, one year also from no more high priests. There were no more high priests uh, in state conferences where members would say, oh, he's a high priest, unless you were put into a stake or ward uh, leadership position that required a high priest status and that you weren't already before, and that you were being elevated from elder. No elders are going into the high priest group anymore. And so just like women are, are debased uh, with the temple change to no more veil, so likewise were men debased, no more high priest. And I'm sorry, but have you not read your scriptures, Mormons? Book of Mormon talks about it. Book of Abraham talks about it. Doctrine and Covenants talks about the importance of a high priest status. And Nelson took it away. And so uh, expect to hear, because it's the priesthood session in April now. And it's no longer uh, both uh, women who were added to conference and men also. It's now either or. And men are in April, women are in October. And, uh, and so expect in the priesthood session to hear a token success story of how uh, uh, high priests are now designated down into the elders quorum. And I had that jokes. We had, uh, I was a secretary in the elders quorum in our ward here. And uh, when uh, the new elders quorum president was called, he had to uh, uh, appoint uh, new elders for counselors, but the stake president kept refusing them. <laughs> and eventually, he had to uh, uh, pick from the high priest group to come down. And so our meetings involved jokes about how he has been uh, lowered in status. <laughs> So yes, all men in the priesthood know that the high priests are, are of the higher order of the Melchizedek priesthood. And the elders are the lowest. Remember, there was this thing called 70s that used to be in the stakes. They were in the middle. They were this middle category. Just like deacon, teacher, priest. 70s were the teachers. Deacons are the elders. And thus, when there's labor to be performed, you call on the elders quorum <laughs> just like the deacons when you want labor work to be done that can be done by kids you call the deacons <laughs> and they're the slaves of the organization and so yeah expect to hear in the priesthood session about no more high priests and how wonderful it's going that men can no longer be high priests and thus go to the celestial kingdom. You have to be a high priest in order to go to the celestial kingdom, Mormons. That's why I'm telling you, read your scriptures. Section 76. You have to be a high priest. And you can say, oh, but I made a high priest in the temple. But what about women? Where is their priesthood out of the temple? Exactly. So, yeah, you guys got screwed and you're still clinging to the church. All right. 
Then it's also a year from the new. Oh yeah, I already talked about the Priesthood Release Society. Uh, they were supposed to do Monson, and then they changed it to this other thing, Gospel Topics, and they don't refer to Scripture. <laughs> it's just yeah, let's share our opinions and feelings, and that'll be the new doctrine. So what a waste. And then they this year they merged that the opinionated class with the Sunday school. So the Sunday school lessons have been cut in half. Uh, so yeah, you you're not getting the full uh, scripture anymore. Your scripture study has been cut down now. And so the church is taking away scriptures from you. They're weeding them out. And uh, that's not a good thing, Mormons not a good thing they need to be increasing scripture study so why aren't they in wanting encouraging scripture study huh wonder if it has anything to do with the whole emergence of the church confessing that Joseph Smith looked in a hat with rocks in it wonder if that has anything to do with it again I want to do the video of the real church history so that you can understand as well as the coded messaging in the Book of Mormon. There's Freemasonic coding, there's uh, uh, Jewish mystical coding, all encoded so that you would learn something. A warning. Something about the last days, right before the millennial reign of peace. Something coded in there. What was it? Something about uh, revelations even? And Revelation 13, the beast guy who gets people to wear his image on their forehead in a baseball cap form, and his image is spouting blasphemies. Image? Huh. I wonder who he would be talking about. What era? Is it sometime in the future, maybe? Maybe Star Trek, maybe that year. But which year of Star Trek? <laughs> Each one were different years. And uh, so, yeah. So, yeah, the new church schedule is also a part of what they'll be talking about. And how great it is that we have less time to hear people ramble off about a testimony non-testimony <laughs> and so uh, yeah Mormons when you get up and you give a travel log or you give a thank -money, or you give your feelings or you give a confession those are not testimonies you can't just ramble off a testimony you can't just say I know the church is true I know that Joseph Smith was a prophet I know the Book of Mormon is true in the name of Jesus Christ. It doesn't work that way. That's not a testimony. A testimony is the fruit. You know, you shall know them by their fruits. Remember the thing I'm trying to get across to you guys? A testimony is a witness of the process of faith leading to the physical reality. That's a testimony. I have physically seen how this doctrinal principle is correct because I implemented it and produced its results and found it to be true because this is what happened you know you can do a, a simple one even though that's a commandment rather than a, a faith thing uh, the word of wisdom for example <laughs> I didn't drink beer and I'm great <laughs> All right, so uh, next uh, you may hear something about the hate bill that was signed two days ago, I understand, today. <laughs> I'm trying to keep up with ABC4 News, uh, but uh, I apparently I'm getting behind. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, the hate bill was signed, and the church is all for it, as long as it doesn't come back to bite them. Which was why today they've lifted the ban on children of parents of LGBT uh, to get them baptized. That was part of it. Also money. But uh, 
yeah, it doesn't do any good to have a bill in Utah of hate crimes when the church now can become uh, uh, victims <laughs> as accused of being hate crime uh, persons. Uh, and so uh, as much as the church says, yeah, nobody can persecute us now. Uh, well, yeah, but you can't persecute anybody else either. And, uh, and so the church also had to allow children to be baptized for that reason also. But again, uh, people, if uh, the church needs to change for you, uh, the church is not for you. I need to write that down. If the church needs to change for you, the church is not for you. It's one of those Zen Riddle things. <laughs> Okay, and uh, uh, this is also one year from No Family Home Evening, the one that I had to write down that I remembered. And so, yes, last year they did away with Family Home Evening, or was it in October? I think it was, well, I don't know. <laughs> they all seem to blur together into one now. Uh, but last year, Family Home Evening was done away with. And uh, uh, it had to have been with the church change. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, because the intention was that uh, it would leave up more time on Sundays for family time. And so that's when he also snuck in. And so you can have family day any day of the week. Uh, we would encourage you to have it on Sundays. And so Utah can now lift the ban on working on Monday evenings. Uh, Utahns can now go back to work in the evenings on Monday now. As long as you're having it on Sunday. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I think that slipped by most Mormons. And, uh, and so then the other one is uh, <laughs> is I'm willing to bet you will not hear anything about any of the gospel topic essays. You should, but they they shouldn't. <laughs> they need to revise them because what they did was destroy the church. Thirteen million members have up and just said. I don't want nothing to do with the church anymore and stop attending. They're still on record. But they're just not attending anymore. Now my story is unique and I've got the videos to help understand if you don't understand. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, there's 13 million last year <laughs> estimated as having up and stop going and so if that number is worse this year in his first year which I'm suspicious it is because they want kids of LGBT parents back and they want more focus on getting to the temple so that people pay more tithing and thus yeah so I'm suspicious that uh, they're hurting for membership numbers still. And, uh, and that all these new attempts to change the way things are run, which are not revelation, is actually working against them. And the stats will prove to us whether revelation or not. And uh, so... Yes, uh, as of last year, I was added to the list of the lost sheep. So I wasn't counted in last year's stats. This year, I should be counted. 
but I won't be because I've not had my names removed. And so uh, it's 13 million and one at least. So again, we will be paying close attention to the stats because the stats are facts and the stats tell the real truth regardless of what they tell you over the pulpit. And I say this and <laughs> so yes, I will be paying close attention to conference only for the purposes of uh, helping Mormons get out. Uh, Mormons, you need to get out. I've got my other video uh, on uh, the evolution of the Mormon God. Because remember, in Joseph Smith's time, it was all about Ammon, Son Ammon, technically, Adam on Diamon, Son Ammon, in section 78 and 95, I believe. And 78 was in 1832 two years after the church and he's talking about a god Amun. This was before the Joseph Smith papyri. And you're saying, well, what does that have to do with anything, Travis? You don't know Egyptian then, do you? And then uh, 1833 was section 95. I am uh, Sun Amun, in other words, Alpha, in other words, Omega, first and the last. Uh, and so, that, again, two years before he got the Joseph Smith papyri. And then he gets the Joseph Smith papyri in 1835, and then decides, you know what? I think I need to study ancient languages. <laughs> and so they get him uh, all sorts of language dictionaries and grammars and scriptures in the foreign languages, uh, Hebrew, Greek, German, uh, and others, because he indicates that the German is the, the best translated version of our doctrine, and yet we still use the King James Version. Mm. Yeah, no mention of that either will they make. So, And where's the Apocrypha? You know, there's all sorts of things that should be brought up if this is God's true church, if they are receiving revelation, you want to focus on gospel, doctrine, theology, ritual. You know, taking away the veil is not a ritual change. Sort of, per se. So, yeah, be watchful. You know, they should have been focusing on how do we correct our gospel principles manual. That's where they need to start. You got to get the doctrine and theology correct. And uh, if you just have this confusion about was it Adam who partook of the fruit first or was it Eve? Did you know there was a, a discrepancy in the church? If you didn't, you're not reading your Book of Mormon or Doctrine and Covenants, uh, section 29, verse 40. I'm pretty sure it's that. Let me check real quick. Doctrine and Covenants, sections 29, change heading to 40. Yep. Wherefore it came to pass that the devil tempted Adam, and he partook of the fruit, forbidden fruit, and transgressed the commandment, wherein he became subject to the will of the devil, because he yielded unto temptation of the devil. What? <laughs> exactly, Mormons. You've been lied to about your doctrine. You've been lied to about your theology. You've been lied to about your ritual. You've been lied to, lied to, and lied to. So I expect none of that to be confessed <laughs> or even hinted at. And so, okay, we're done. Enjoy conference, because I'll be covering it and pointing out all the errors. It's not right to criticize the brethren, even when that criticism is correct. 
a not exact quote from uh, Elder Oaks at the time in a PBS documentary. So, alrighty, get out of the church, Mormons. Just get out. Quit complaining. Quit arguing. You can't do it. You're not going to beat me in an argument. You can't do it soundly, so just don't even try. You've not been trying this whole time when I've had my competition. You failed. You can't do it. And so, yes, only Russians are the ones putting thumbs down. Because uh, Mormons are now saying, oh, I can't handle this. I can't listen anymore. Ah, what do I do? <laughs> so, yes. Although I've been doing it this year. So this year's results will not show up in the stats for 2018. Ah. So we got to wait till next year to see how much of an impact I've had. Okay. Till we meet again. <laughs>